All right, this is Winning Cures Everything. The AAF $250 million investment. We got to talk about this to start off today's show. Carolina Hurricanes owner, that's the NHL for those that don't pay any attention to hockey, (laughs) uh, owner Tom Dundon will serve as the AAF board of directors after the first week and how successful everything was. He was not, I won't say obsessed, but he thought very highly of the product. He came to Charlie Ebersold, Ebersold, however you say it, and told him, look, I understand how these like startup projects work. You go and get a little bit of money in step A. Step B, you go get a little more money. Right. Step C, he said, why not just screw it and you can get it all from one place and you will have all the money you're going to need. And Charlie said that's a deal he could not turn down. Nope. Cut a uh, check, $250 million. $250 million, and he is now a chair. Like, oh, the yeah, chair yeah. of that, the that board def- of directors. That definitely buys you a chair. And and if you're paying that much, there there doesn't need to be many other chairs. Agreed. Uh, David Glenn of The Athletic, he reported that the AAF was in a position where they needed this money, like now. They needed capital to be able to pay players, et cetera, et cetera. And I talked on The Daily Show today about how that was just wrong. Yeah, yeah, a little quick with the trigger finger. Um, well, he and, came uh, out, and, and the reason he was saying it is because he had been told by agents that the players had not been paid for week one, Yeah, which so is just, true. He just assumed it was because, you know, they didn't have the money. Or, or his... Sources that's right said that they didn't have the money when in fact it was exactly what they said it was. It was a, a glitch because they switched payroll companies or payroll systems or whatever. Like they all ended up getting paid today. It's it's really funny that they use the word glitch. The the ringers doing like they do like a big rewatchables on movies and stuff like that. They've just done one on The Office and how. This this is a glitch in the payroll system. Yeah, we just fixed the glitch, so I kind of <laughs> think that's 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 all it was. And uh, guys are getting paid, and the league's going well. It was, it and was they've got all not. they've got all the money they need for this year. Well, and they, I mean, two hundred fifty million. Like, well, I, I don't know what their operating budget is. So, well, I would imagine would, they've yeah. got enough for another three years. The salary oh, wow. pool for the entire league is only $28 million. Oh, then, yeah, that'll buy you a lot because so, your coaches aren't making that damn much. Yeah, your coaches no, I also aren't. don't know what the leases on the buildings are that they're And I'm, I would imagine it's probably not a those. whole lot. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm wondering, so one of the things that David Glenn at The Athletic brought up is that Raleigh, North Carolina could end up with an AAF team next year. That's right. Now, would this be a relocation or an expansion? It doesn't matter. Well, it, it matters <laughs> as far as... The money goes right because if you're bringing a whole another team in, that yeah, adds a more money. quite a bit. But it also is going to add value. It is, but I, the reason I bring that up is because you know Memphis brought up or they they claimed eleven thousand people. No, and it was no. closer to three. So a friend of mine, but and I don't know who had all this going on. He went. You went right. I was supposed to. Yeah, yeah. I, I did not, not. I was not. Like going. I was. I was actually texting you two hours before the game. Like, hey, I'm leaving in a little bit. Yeah, no, I thought you would. And then, and then, no. He, so my, my wife nixed that. The, the um, area code of Memphis is 901, and he was like 901 people showed up. Yep, and uh, it was great. Like it, it was, was cold. You know, 901 fans. Um, 901. I, I don't know. Cold. That rainy. I don't know that 900 people were there. Maybe. No, there was there was about 2,000. Oh, that, I'd say two whoa. to three thousand. You couldn't tell from TV. No, no, no. You couldn't tell from TV. But if you go and actually look at like pictures and whatnot, like there were big pockets of fans. Bad weather in Memphis right now. I oh, don't yeah. know what it is the rest of the year or the rest of the country. I know this. It was cold. It was rainy, and I wasn't going. I was going to sit at home and I was going to watch from my chair. Well, I was it? So my father in law and I were like ready to go, and my wife was like, "Well." <laughs> You know, I mean, if y'all want to, that's fine. I, I, I but, texted you early. What was it, Friday or Saturday? Yeah, Friday yes. we were texting. Yeah. Or Saturday. And I was just like, look, man, I'd, I'd love to go. It's going to be a game time decision. Yeah. If it ends up being decent, I'll be there. <laughs> if it's not, listen, I don't love this thing enough to do that. Yeah. That, so so you see how few people were there. Yes, right. I can't imagine the lease for the building was that much if – 
unless they were expecting like fifteen to twenty thousand people. And if they were, like the the Tigers drew seventeen thousand, and yeah, they're like a good you, team. You can't do that. You just can't expect those kind of numbers, especially right off the bat, right now. Right. So you got to grow to that. If if it is a relocation, Memphis is a prime team to lose it to to lose this team. I don't know that the people of Memphis will be that devastated. I don't. I think mean, maybe they will those nine hundred people will be upset. But I will say this: there's a there is a big time uh, interest. In it, as far as social media, as far as, uh, so I, I listened to Jeff Calkins on Gary Parish's show. So they're are they talking about and, it on Memphis radio? Oh yes, okay. like, they they talk about it every day. I haven't I haven't turned a radio on. Which is time. which is crazy. Like, it, but right now I'm in the Grizzlies. Kind of suck. The Tigers not doing really well. Uh, there's not a lot to discuss, but people are interested in it. They had an article about Penny Hardaway and the Tiger basketball program. And then Calkins did another article about the first game of the AAF at the Liberty Bowl, and the AAF one dwarfed the the Penny article. People love football. Yeah, I, I don't know that people know that or not. People love football. People absolutely love football. I was very much out on this league before it started because I now I was young when the XFL came in. Yeah, and I was a young man. I say and I'm not like I wasn't a child, but I bought in. Hook, line, and sinker. Everybody I was very did. excited, and and it broke my heart. And I just well, said because the the I'm league not, sold itself this. so well. Right. Like Vince McMahon knew he's what a, he was that's doing, right? But and this, I know that today. I know that he's a you know he's a salesman, right? But this is a completely different deal because it is a well, it's an NFL. They are building it up to be an NFL developmental league. That's right. They don't want these players to stick around forever. They want them to build up and get a shot to go to the NFL. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're three year contracts for two hundred fifty million uh thousand dollars. Sorry, two hundred fifty thousand yeah. dollars for three years. Yeah, that's it. That's what they want it to be. And that's it. See, what you just talked about, that's something else I wrote down was the difference between the AAF contract and the NFL practice squad contracts. If you and I was reading an article that the ringer wrote back in October or November last year in California. If you are on an NFL practice squad for all 17 weeks, along with the first six weeks of training camp, after taxes, you make $88,000. That's, that is enough to maybe sleep in your car well, in California. No, and hang on. No, no, no. You're technically an NFL player, even though you're a practice squad guy. I'm going to bet those uh, player union dues are still taken out of that check. Wouldn't doubt it. And, and you're not talking about – Okay, you take Tom Brady's player union due out, nobody cares. You know, you, you take these guys out and they make eighty grand. That's that's a lot. It's a for, big for the difference. guys that live in L.A. Yeah, trying to trying to make it work. So, or the and guys this, that live in New York. And I mean, so, it is in the AAF deal, ass cities. Now, tell me this: the other side of this was they were talking about. You know, why would you set it up in Orlando and Atlanta and Memphis and da 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 da? If because the TV stuff like. People are going to watch yep. if it's on TV. Correct. But does it matter if it's the Memphis Express or if it's like the Chattanooga okay. Express? I don't care because it, I have watched all of these games that I have had the ability to watch. Yeah. And and it didn't matter if Memphis was playing or not. I'm I'm watching every second of the Orlando games because oh, I, it's so I, much I, fun. I worship at the feet of Steve Spurrier, somebody who grew up hating Florida his entire life. I it, there was a respect the man, hate the team. Yeah. My entire life. Um, I'm following that guy to the grave, and, and that's just it. Um, so, no, they're, they're a lot of fun. And then some of the other teams are a lot of fun. It, it's just I love football. Yeah. And so, I mean, I don't care who's playing. I've got – here's what way. I like most about it. For the most part, I've got equal level of competition on both sides. Yeah. I'm good with that. That's kind of all I ask for. It's one of the reasons I strongly dislike local high school football is because <laughs> there are really good teams that beat up on really bad teams all the time. Oh, yeah. And it's my biggest pet peeve with college football is you have big boy teams that beat up high school teams. This is what I love. I love this. Yeah. I'm in. And I don't care where the teams are. Here's Me and you talked about this a little bit, and I don't know if we ever did this on the show or not, but – I think it was smart to have teams in Birmingham and in Memphis and in Orlando. These are cheaper places to live. Those those cats living out in San Diego, that's tough. That's, that's a, it. Oh, that's yeah. a hard li- They obviously don't live in San Diego. 
They are staying in San Diego, probably minor league baseball in it, six dudes to a to an apartment kind of thing. Yeah. And and and, and huffing it and roughing it. Um until the season's over with, and then they're going back to wherever the hell they came from. Yeah, I because, believe them. Because that's not enough money to live in San Diego. I thought it was smart to have teams in cities that are cheaper to live in. And the other thing, you put them all in the South, that's where people love football. Yeah. Like, we we love college football in the South because for the longest time we didn't have pro football. Well, it's, we always had the same. San Antonio the Falcons, had 29,000 oh, people. There's, there's no question I mean, in my mind. Crazy. Nobody was more excited about Vegas getting their football team. The, the Oakland Raiders made a mistake by going to Vegas. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. San Diego absolutely made a mistake by going to L.A. And maybe they can renege on that deal to bunk up with the Rams and be the second L.A. team. Yeah. If I was them, I would be on the first thing smoking to San Antonio. Those people love football, yeah. and they don't have football. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you would draw – and now, the thing is, in L.A., obviously, the worth is so much more. And they're not worried about drawing people. They're not I worried about this. No, they, don't get, they want TV eyes, and it doesn't matter what city you're in in the NFL, you're getting the same TV eyes. Yeah. And, and because you're in L.A., it's obviously going to be valued at more. Yep. Um, but if you, if you want people that are going to care about your team, San Antonio is the If, if they built a fifty to 60,000-seat stadium in San Antonio, you're talking about an un. Believe and then San Antonio is a world class city. Yeah, it's an awesome city. Yeah, I agree with that. So I agree with that. I'm 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 all in on that. Let's uh let's jump off this. We'll talk about our reaction to the league after uh after two weeks. Sound good? Okay. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.